Hey guys, what's up? Yeah, on today's video, we're going to talk about the Pultec plugins, okay? And yeah, so why Pultec? Dude, it's one of the most classic EQs out there. Uh, the Pultec started in the uh, 60s, I'm pretty sure. And why on this specific, you know, genre where I very, you know, specialized, which is like underground metal, like a dead thrash, black metal, and punk, like a very distorted, hardcore punk, okay? And believe it or not, works too on those cases, okay? So, uh, let's see. I'm not pretty sure I know how the putter works, okay? So we want to dig it about, about too much in that particular point. But in, I will talk this very briefly. So it's like a, you add and also you subtract almost in the same frequency. And that's the magic of the pull deck because those curves, you know, believe it or not, make the sound sweeter and more softer, which is super weird because you add and then on the same time you subtract. And probably because it's the tubes, how the secret bar was building back in the day and make everything magic, okay? And so I used to have Pultex plugins, you know, a lot, like, um, uh, and let me remember on, on the Slate versions, the Waves, the, and also on the Universal Audio plugins too. And I'm pretty sure any the Plugin the pullover have their own version of the pull deck. Okay, and now I'm back to the waves. Why? Because after have the universal audio, just in case, I have the legacy version, which is the first version they did back in the day. Now, now they have a new one. I never tried a new one, but I was thinking, mm, yeah, this sounds cool, but what if if the the other I used back in the day, which is the Waves, sounds different or better. And then I found a super discount, you know, on the Black Friday or, or because that was the, the, the end of the year was like a for 20 or 20 bucks. I mean, 20 to 29 or 20 bucks. And then I, and then I bought it back and yeah, it sounds pretty cool. And then we going to, to, I mean, we're going to see the difference between those two. Okay. But, but mostly this, Video is about how the pull tech works in, uh, for example, in a dead metal band. On today's band, we're going to see Nighthand. Nighthand and I went back here to the studio to record the second album. And this is the band I talk in my first video of the year, the ups down, I mean the ups and down of the 2000, 2022. And this band was, uh, was considered one of the best dead metal, dead do metal bands for the last year. So they back here to studio to record a second album and I'm very happy and proud they still believe me. Okay, so yeah, let's take it. I mean, so yeah, I mean, sorry. These are the tracks for the first album we did last year. And we want to put it on drums, bass, and also on the master bass, okay? And, and also for the video, like I said, we're going to talk about mostly of the Waves one, okay? It's one of the oldest, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure probably it's one of the first Pultex EQs plugins out there in, in, in the market. I took it about, oof. Late 90s, probably. I mean, I mean, later 90s, 98, 99, this star came out. And yeah, sounds pretty cool. And, and still sounds very, very good. And I totally forgot how good this plugin sounds. Okay, so, well, let's see. Okay, so let's go to Pro Tools. And then probably you see this in your screens. So this is the plugin itself. And let me put it on. Um, for example, this is the Universal Audio. The difference are um, the waves have the gain and Universal Audio doesn't have the gain. Actually, in the real unit, you don't have the gain output. So yeah, this is more close to the original, but here you have this option, which is very, very handy, okay? So but let's focus on the waves, okay? So yeah, I was playing this around. I will, f let me put this all reset, full reset, there it is. Because let's start it from the top, okay? So low frequency, you have the 20 to 100. The bandwidth is like a how those groups, if you want a more narrow, more or more um, wider. 
me personally talking, I prefer the wider, so to five to an app, that's where the magic happens, okay? And also you have the boost and the attenuation, which is the, the if you want to put more or less, then what is the magic that, that too? You have the boost on the highs, so you have for 3K to 16 kilohertz, and this is this is how you much you, you, you I mean you want the boost, and the atene, uh, attenuation that's the word I guess <laughs> is between the five to twenty kilohertz. Okay, and the mates. Okay, specifically in this playing version, this is how the power goes back in the day. So by default it's sixty hertz. How what was the the power? And also you have the fifty. But to me, really, I don't hear any difference, but I left it as default, okay? Well, so why not? And also you have here the, your, your game, you know, this is for the matching games later, you know, because I don't know if you know this, but every single time you use a compressor or EQ, the, your game change. So you need to level compensate your game, okay? And okay, let's check it out these drums. All right. Those are the drums row. Just in case the drums have only EQ, a little bit of compression of the kick in and kick out, I'll just see this. I using the SSL, this is the 9000J for, for plugin and lines, okay? But the rest is very raw, as you see. I have a little bit of reverb there too, just for making this more tasteful only, but let's see. Aha, uh -huh. now I start. 60 hertz, boost, oh, too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, wait, wait, wait. Check this out. Do you feel it? So, that's the boost alone. It doesn't sound right, it sounds like a boomy, but when you but when you add the attenuation, that's where the magic happens. And now the low end sounds better. Let's see around 8 kilohertz boost. That's my highs. Attenuation in 20. There is. I clip in, that's with bypass. So this is my this is my regular gain here, around minus six. Let's put this back. Too much. There it is. Bypass. Now let's focus on the symbols. Wait. I boost a lot, but it doesn't sound harsh. Without. Of course, it doesn't sound harsh either, because I record this very well, okay? But the highs now sounds more round, sweet. Doesn't match the of, of the pull. Now let's focus on the low end, especially the kick in the in the mid range. Good, right? Without sounds. I mean, half a low attack, natural attack. Because I record this really well. <laughs> but with beefy, but no loose beefy. It's like a very focused beefy. The Tom Sue without. Wait. Yeah. Pretty good, right? Now let's check it out with, uh, with uh, Universal Audio Plugin. I told you this, this is a legacy version. They have a better version, which is right here, it's like 300 bucks. And then I bought the other one for 
29, I guess. Well, but this is the legacy version, which is, this is the first version that he released when they started making plugins in the early 2000s. The problem is I don't have the gain output. So, let me put this. I already have this. This is my game, my game output now, okay? This is a EQ, a really EQ for Pro Tools. It's super clean, so will not affect anything. Just the gain, okay? For let me compensate this. Because when I add this, let me let me put this same way. Let's see, 60, a little there. Plus, aha, uh -huh. there, 28, okay. So this is a problem. Let me bypass this. Oh yeah, sounds good, but the problem is yeah, I have more gain here, and then that's make it, you believe sounds better. That's the reason I have this EQ. That's more in the same level of this one. Let's see, let's bypass this. Let's focus on the low end. That's the universal audio. To me, these have more focus, this is more loose, the low end. That's not bad, but I prefer the waves now. Okay. Pretty cool, right? Let's go back, bypass this. That sounds... That sounds end? Okay, that sounds end. Okay, let me back... Oh, wait. Yeah, that sounds... <laughs> So let's listen this in the um, in a slow part of the song, okay? One second. So this is your universal audio. Bypass this, bypass this, bypass this. Waves. Let's focus on the high on the cymbals, okay? Give us a love you. Sounds cool. Even in the overheads, the waves have is more sweeter. Interesting. Yeah. Waves to me win because that's supposed to be sound. I mean, that's a pull that is supposed to be sound sweeter. It doesn't sound bad, but yeah. Probably the, the expensive version sounds similar than this one or better, who knows. I don't have the money right now to spend like a 300 bucks only one plugin. But yeah, ways bro. Very old plugin is still worth like a chump. Chump, I mean. Cool, now let's go to the bass. Oh, that's when it sounds end. Cool. Awesome. Now let's check it out the base. Sure, 100. Let's see. What a difference, right?
Saying what's good, yeah. Let me the compensate it right there. Cool. Now listen to this together with the drums. And just in case the, the bass sounds kind of weird, kind of facey because we use a little bit of face in the recording process because that's the sound they want to to get. Okay, just in case. <clears throat> drums. Let's bypass the bass. That, that, that was the bass before. Fine, but with this. Right now, let's do with the guitars. Okay, let me do, oh, sorry, then I need to start this one second, but that's cool, right? So, so you have an idea how the pull tech works on the bass, too, and a lot of natural harmonics, which is crazy. One more time without sounds cool without, too. Remember, it's road trap. Well, I think you there. I have this on the DI, is it a universal audio Ampeg? Also, I have the smooth operator by uh, Baby Audio. Check it out the video I made for this super handy tool for your mixings. Another there. But pretty much it's new EQ. It's EQ only in the bass group track with. Beefy, but good way. No loose, focus. That's the magic of the pulpit. Cool, now let's focus on the guitars, okay? Okay, I will show this trick I always use for the guitars. The trick is, me personally talking, speaking, I mean, I don't like to too much add EQ on, on the guitars because I love, I, I mean, I love commitment to me and my client when we dial of the guitar tone. So to me, guitars, I add, in the mixing process, this is what I do. Add a little bit of tape machine there for tape saturation. I cut, I mean, I use cutting, I mean, for the filters, you know? And maybe a little bit of IQ here, there in, Sometimes in the solos, and I add a lot of effects for the solos, but the main tone, I don't touch it. I touch it when the client, had, I mean, after the recording process, ah, I don't like the tone, but that's happened once, why, I mean, once in a while, because we, I mean, when I record it, I take too much time to, I mean, to, to get the, the tone they want. And then that's the reason for the mixing. For me, guitars is much easier because the tone is right there. So I don't have to do too much there. It's just more levels and the other things I told you. But this is one trick I use always. For example, if you listen to this, the tone and how they play this, the, the tune is very low. I don't know which tune to play, but probably C, C tuning. But what if you want the guitars even more beefy, you know, with more low end? This is a trick. 30 hertz. Forget about this. Forget about the, uh, the, all, the, all the high frequencies. Focus on, 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 on the lows. Let's put the bandwidth on 5 for now. And check it out. 3. That's a lot. Attenuation on 3, 2. Without. 
Good, right? Wait. Sounds deeper. It naturally is deeper a lot. Wait. And this, trust me, this is a trick for the pull tech on 30 hertz. Around three, it's between three and five. Let's, let's, let's see five, okay? That's good too, five. Let's see the bandwidth, eight. Without. Oh yeah, that's better even. So if you are more subtle, around three, the band win at five, if you are more focused on that, that that's taste of my, I mean, that's a matter of taste, I mean, yeah. For this case, let's put it, let's leave it that, that way. Right? The difference, sounds very deep, low tuning, dense, because the music is doom, death metal, and now wit, feel that, now let's check it out with drums. Yes. Without. It was good without too. Wait. Feel the low end. Without. Sounds cool, but with. Even more dense. Without. With. Right? Pull take, bro. That's that, that's your magic pull take. Yeah, it works too on the uh, this kind of music too. Ah, uh, and okay, so I guess I really say this, but I reveal myself. This trick about the rig, the 30 hertz on the guitars works on, dude. Everything rock. I mean, yeah, rock, blues, trash, heavy, dead metal, trash metal. Listen. Yeah. Really good, right? Now let's check it out on the main, on the master bus. Just in case, sometimes I'm gonna use the pull thing on, on on the master bus. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes not. Depends. But for the matter of the build, they use it, okay? They use 60. Just a little bit. Information. 
Let, let's bypass the whole pull text in the whole mix, okay? Bypass. Wait. Oh, wow, wow, what, what a difference. Excuse me. <coughs> Out. Wait. Pull tech, bro. That's a pull tech sound. Makes everything sounds bigger, but without losing focus, especially in the low end. The high end in the overall mix is sweeter. And that because the pull tech, the, the analog versions is a, is a tube EQ. They use tubes, huge transformers too. The combination of transformer and tubes are pure magic without. This is amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. And yeah, and that's all for today. And what do you think about pull deck? Uh, now, if you are thinking to buy, you know, those like uh, analog versions, the the brand Warm Audio have the own version of this. I'm pretty sure those are the one of the most um, cheapest one. It's like a six hundred each. So for the master bus, you need to buy two because this only is a mono thing. Excuse me, it's not a multi stereo or multi mono, no. And yeah, uh, Audio Escape have their own version, and I hear that one is very, very good. What else? Stem Audio have that too. That's more expensive. And there is a brand for China. I totally forgot this. Cleared something. I will put the picture here. There. Some people send for two hundred bucks. Sounds, sounds sounds amazing. Other people says it's pure trash. Uh, I don't know, but if I buy, I mean, if I'm thinking to buy any Pultec analog rack, it's gonna be between the no, not between the probably. I will choose the Audioscape. So far, I see him. I know people who have that one. Everybody's, I mean, oh my God, those pull techs are pure, pure magic. That were obvious too, cheaper. The components are very good too. And I have two friends, they they have those. And then they told me, dude, so those ones are beautiful too. So, but yeah, well, as you see, pull tech um, playing sounds very well, very well on Doom, Death Metal. And also, I mean, don't, because I'm saying this, don't buy only the waste version. You can get, you can buy or any, for any brand. That, that's okay, because we do almost the same kind of trick, okay? But yeah, so that's it. And yeah, and don't forget to give me a like, to subscribe, to share this, and also to help me to monetize my channel. And that's all for today. Bye, guys. See ya.